Good morning. Glad you all are joining today for uh, one of our Monday through Thursday Bible studies. We also have our Bible study live on Facebook on the Amazing Grace Women's Retreat uh, Facebook page at 7 a.m. Monday through Thursday. But today you're joining us on YouTube. Thanks for joining. Subscribe to us if you'd like to get our new teachings as they drop in. Today we're going to be talking about spiritual eyesight, our spiritual sight. Did you know that you have two sets of spiritual or two sets of eyes if you're a Christian. If you're a Christian, you have two sets of eyes. You have your physical eyes, and then you also have spiritual eyesight, spiritual eyes that you can see with and see good things coming ahead for us in the future. And so we're going to look here and open up in a passage in Psalm 27 and verse 13. And David says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What does David say there? He says, I would have lost all hope. I would have given up on life unless I could have seen ahead and seen the goodness of the Lord. Now, if you know much about David's story, you know that there was a time of his life, that he, a quite lengthy time, that he had to live in a cave because his life was being sought after. He was sought as prey by the king and, and his men. And David had to live in this way for quite a lengthy time. That was just one of the things that had occurred in David's life that was quite challenging. And he says here in this passage in Psalm 27, 13 about his life. He says, you know what? I would have given up on everything. I would have lost all hope. I would have just thrown in the towel. I would have thrown my hands up if I couldn't have seen the goodness of the Lord ahead at that time. If he would have looked at his physical situation with his physical eyes, everything told him that there is no reason to think that any good thing is coming. You might as well give up. Throw your hands up. Surrender. Just say, I, I quit. I quit on life. But David says, I could see ahead and I could see the goodnesses of the Lord. I want to also turn over to Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. A very familiar passage of scripture. If you um, have studied the word much at all, maybe you're kind of new at being in the word. But this is a very familiar passage of scripture for Christians. And here in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God has only thoughts of peace peace and thoughts of good things towards you. Do you know that before you perform any action, you had to think about it? Your mind had to consider it before you did anything, whether it was good or bad. And God says, you know, every thought that I have towards you is good. So it is not possible that our Lord can do evil things. Now, Satan would love nothing more than to get you thinking and believing that God is the one who's behind all the toil and strife and evil, hardships, disease, and everything in your life. That is not God. God is not behind that. God did not create mankind so that he would suffer. God created mankind as he did in the Garden of Eden. And then whenever we failed, God made a new way in Jesus Christ. Satan would love nothing more for, than for you to believe that God has evil intent towards you. But you know, Satan has been here for thousands of years. And because he was created by God as an angel, he, Satan fell from that. Because God doesn't force his creations to, to be fake robots. God allows us for us to be and choose who we want to be. He gave us free will, and he gave those angels free will. And Satan and a third of the angels have fallen, and they are here on this earth, and they do torment. But God has given us all capability of triumphing over Satan at any given moment. At any given moment. Why? Because Jesus endured everything at the cross. All the, all the victory that was needed has been endured at the cross, and and Ephesians chapter 6 
tells us that we have a spiritual armor against Satan to defeat him every time we can quench every fiery dart of him. That's what the scripture tells us. Now, Satan would love nothing more than for you to believe that your God is, is evil and that he, he does things out of anger and punishes his people in ways that God does not do this. God has given us grace and mercy. He's given us freedom and a free will because he loves us. He didn't want to create a bunch of robots. As scripture does tell us whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth or correcteth. Right? But these are not evil things. This is God's ability to get us to see the things and the situations that we're in and while we're in them. Many of them are by our own choices. Right? Sometimes circumstances and things also happen without, without us knowing about them or without us having any part in them. Paul was a great evangelist uh, in his day and, and has written much of the New Testament for the people of God, but he suffered a lot. He went through a lot of suffering, but he, Paul didn't live in his suffering. He knew he had spiritual eyes and a spiritual capability of seeing things and seeing good things ahead and seeing good things beyond what he was enduring in his physical body. So we have a physical body with physical eyes and we have a spiritual body that's been given us to us in Jesus Christ and spiritual eyes. We've studied this many times. Speaking of Ephesians chapters 1 and 2, when the, when the word tells us that we're seated with Jesus Christ in heavenly places. And where is Jesus? He's at the right hand of the Father. And so Jesus gives us continual access in the Spirit to access that throne at any given time from our physical state that we are in, which is amazing. Christ has done this. But God has only good things. And David tells us in Psalm 27, 13, he says, you know what? I would have just, I would have said, forget it all. I'm done. I'm done with my life. Unless I could have seen the goodness of the Lord, he says there in Psalm 27, 13. Let's look over at another passage of Scripture in the New Testament. We're going to go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we're going to look at verse, uh, chapter 4 and verse 8, I believe. Oh, no, it's 18. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. This is a great verse. It says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. This was inspired by God through Paul, through the Apostle Paul. And Paul has said, you know what? As Christians, we don't look at the things which are uh, temporary. We look at this life and this world in a different way. He's basically telling us that we have two sets of eyes. We can see things physically and we can see things spiritually. That's what Paul is telling us here in, in 2 Corinthians 4.18. Do you see things, good things ahead that are good spiritually? Because God has only good intentions and good thoughts about you. God does not do any evil towards you. Right? Some of you think that God is is an evil God. That he's, he's this, he's a God that reigns from heaven and just has fun toying with people. And, and that is so, so false. You know, your culture and who you are around and who you hear from and the narratives that are spoken to you will influence you and shape you into believing things sometimes that are not true. Look around. Go to different countries. Go to even people in our own country. Some people believe that lies are truth and that truth are lies. This happens because the things that are being said to us over and over again shape us and shape how we think. And some of you truly believe that God is 
an evil God and that he is not a just and good God. Maybe the Lord has corrected you or maybe what you have done has caused you to reap some things that you've sown and you're blaming God for it. Or maybe some terrible things have happened to you in your life and you blame God for it when Satan was behind it all the time, all the way. Trying to get you to have a misconception about God and about and an outlook on life that's just terrible and that you have no hope. We're going to look at a verse here in just a minute that's so important for us to get. It teaches us that when we don't have hope, it can literally make us physically and mentally sick. When you don't believe good things are coming, you can get physically or mentally sick. You can throw in the towel and give up on life. But if you've come across today's teaching and you're at that place in your life where you are just ready to just throw in the towel, you, you're sick of it, you're tired of it, I want to encourage you to listen to the remainder of our teaching today. And I want to tell you that God only has good things for you. I love my children, but I'm not a perfect parent. God is truly perfect, but I am not. But I do love my children. And one of the things that I would do when my children were younger, one of the things that I did to, to keep them safe, we did not have a fenced-in yard. So one thing that I did was that I stayed outside with them at all times when they were too young to understand what the highway meant, what the road meant, what could happen to them if they got out in the road. I stayed right there outside with them. But at the same time, I also set up boundaries for them. I set up boundaries for them to keep them safe. And so I had this boundary on one side of the yard. There was a tree, and on the other side of the yard was the, the back of the house. And I said, if you cross this boundary ever, then you're going to go inside, and you're going to have to stay inside for the rest of the day and not be able to come out until tomorrow. And they did not like that when that would happen. That happened a couple of times because even... It didn't matter what reason, if they crossed that boundary, I would never wanted them to get close enough to the road where I couldn't run and grab them and keep them from getting hit. So I had a boundary that was very, very safe for them to stay in. And if they didn't, the consequences were very high. And you know that that's what the Word is. The Word of God is that for us. It's this boundary. God teaches us that, look, if you stay in this safe area, things are going to be different for you. But does that mean that things always turn out perfect and good and that no harm or danger comes your way? No. It means whom the Lord loveth, he does correct when you cross that boundary. But staying within that boundary gives you peace and security knowing that good things are ahead no matter what comes your way. Being close to the master, being close to the shepherd matters for you, for you mentally and even physically. You know that there's many times that I've known that the Lord was leading me away from dangerous situations and I need to get out of them. And there's times that I ignored him too and stayed in some of those situations. But our God only has good things and only has good thoughts. And when we opened up our teaching and talked about how David said he would have lost all hope and given up on his life if he didn't see ahead of the goodnesses of God. And we look here in 2 Corinthians 4.18 and we see that we have two sets of eyes. If you're looking at your physical situations of life, if you're looking physically and what the Bible says carnally here in, the, in 2 Corinthians 4.18. Then you're looking at the temporal things, the temporary things. They're not eternal. We've got to start seeing all of those things, no matter what they are, with our spiritual eyes, knowing that God has a good end in sight for us and that he will bring us to that. And sometimes we have to wait that's what we're going to look at now. 
We're going to go to Proverbs chapter 13, back in the Old Testament. And we're going to look at verse 12 in Proverbs 13. This is that verse that I mentioned to you we really need to take a focus on today. Proverbs 13, 12 says, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. So let's just break down this verse just in the first half of it at first. Hope deferred make it the heart sick. What is hope deferred? Well, first of all, hope is your dreams, your expectations, those things that you're look, looking forward to. And for some of you in your relationships, you're not, you're, you, you've lost hope. For some of you in your health, you've lost hope. For some of you in your financial situations, you've lost hope. And the Bible tells us that hope deferred maketh the heart sick. Now, when your heart is sick, it can be, it can cause not only mental, but physical problems as well. Why? Because when our hearts are sick, that's a despair. That is an affliction that is occurring to us in our minds which reflects on our physical body. Now, in today's terminology, when we talk about a heart being sick, we talk about anxiety, depression, right? It's physical. It becomes a physical thing. When we lose hope and we deal with stress, anxiety, and depression, then we lose hope. But what happens to our physical bodies when we go into depression and deal with things like that? Well, at short term, we can have headaches, exhaustion, fatigue, diarrhea, upset stomach, ulcers, sleep issues, and weight loss or weight gain, and the list goes on. But those are just some of the most common ones of the short term. Now listen, there's some long term proofs that science has found of people dealing with depression long term. What can, how can it affect your body long term? First of all, it affects your immune system and therefore there is evidence showing that depression, long term depression can lead to chronic inflammation, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, cancer, irregular heartbeat, high blood pressure, and damage to your arteries, amongst other things. And I just wanted to share those with you all because some of you may be dealing with some of those right now and that you are dealing with the stress and anxiety from your relationships or your financial situation or your health issues or, or other relationship issues, right? Maybe, maybe not just like a spouse, but maybe other relationship issues. And so that verse in Proverbs 13, 12 says, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. What does deferred mean? Deferred means it's put off, it's dragged out, it's shelved, it's set aside, it's no longer in sight, it's delayed. And so you lose hope. What happens when you lose hope? You end up dealing with those anxiety and depression issues. You're stressed. You're emotionally and physically exhausted because you've lost hope. You don't believe that good things are coming. You believe bad things are coming and you are in the expectation that things are not going to be fixed or resolved. But I want to remind you what David said in 20, Psalm 27, 13. He says, I had fainted unless could have seen the goodness of God in the land of the living. Seeing with his spiritual eyes, knowing good things were coming, no matter his current predicament, no matter his current situations and circumstances that were all with his physical eyes, telling him that things are not going to work out good, and that you might as well give up. But his spiritual eyes said otherwise. And we have to 
keep that focus on the spiritual things by staying in the Word of God, by standing on the promises that He's given to us in His Word. And you know that God has given me promises within my own life. There's one right now I'm waiting on an answer from God. He has given me a promise. He has spoken something very specifically to me, and I believe that God's going to come through on that promise. And if I didn't believe it, I would lose hope about it, and it would cause me problems in my life. And it has at times whenever I've lost hope, thinking that God was going to resolve and fix that situation. But I believe him, and I stand in that promise. We've got to do that. You know that spiritually, God will speak to you. If you are his child, you have his spirit inside of you, and he will literally speak things to your heart on promises that you can stand on and believe and know that those things, good things, are coming but not only that, the Word of God has countless promises, and they are for all of the people of God. And you can stand in those promises. Waiting on God, sometimes we lose hope. But when we stand in a place where we see things with our spiritual eyes, we can keep, look, the desire, the Bible tells us here in Proverbs 12, 13, 12. It says, hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but... When the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. You know what that desire is? It's seeing the good things that are ahead. It's living in hope, living by faith, and not by our physical eyesight, living with our spiritual eyesight. Our spiritual eyes. Do you believe that good things are coming concerning some of your your situations now that are difficult. We've got to we've got to believe what the word tells us. These are the promises of God. And remember, even David said, my situations were so so challenging that there was no there there was no other reason for me to hope and to think that they were going to turn out right. He says, I would have fainted. I would have given up on everything. I would have lost all hope. I would have given up on my life unless I could have seen the goodness of the Lord ahead in the land of the living. He knew good things were coming. Do you believe good things are coming? Where are you in your relationship with God? I just want to encourage you, if you want to to grow in the Lord, to, to then get in his word and study, study it individually, study it by listening to teachings or preachings online or teaching, teachings and preachings at your church, at a local church and continue to seek the Lord. The Bible says, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be open, ask and it shall be given. These are promises of God. Do you need help in believing that good things for you are coming as a child of God. Get in his word and stand on those promises. And when Satan comes at you with something with your physical eyes and you're starting to see things with those physical eyes and lose hope, then you stand in the promises that have been given to you in the word. And you have them right there in your heart because you, you know what they are. Go to the word and seek them. Say, God, give me some promises in this thing. I need some specific promises from you. And I guarantee you, God will give you some. I absolutely guarantee it. Why? Because he said, seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. Ask and it shall be given. And every time I can tell you, I can testify to you in my own personal life, that every time that I went to the Lord and I was weighed down, I was heavy, maybe I was stressed, maybe I was anxious, maybe I was in depression, whatever it was, every time. I went to the Lord. He always has given me something in his word and in his spirit. Some of you may say, well, I just really don't know, but I know the Lord. And therefore, you don't know that your sins have all been clean. And therefore, you don't know that you're going to go to heaven one day. So that would be the first hope that you would need. Our life is but a vapor. We don't know when it's going to end. It quickly vanishes away. So I'm going to share this very briefly with you all. If, if in my hand right now, 
if in my hand was the way that you could go to heaven, what do you think? That it would be if in my hand was the way that you can get forgiven and cleansed of all unrighteousness as the bible says what would that be and so you have an answer you can speak it out you might say well i'm a good person we could put that in my hand you might say well i uh, my grandfather was a preacher okay well you spoke it out and you can put it in my hand whatever you could speak out so what, how do you know you're going to go to heaven? How do you know that you're right with God? Speak it out. And say it landed here right in my hand. Friends, I want to tell you that there is only one thing that can be here. Only one. And it is not your righteousnesses, which the Bible calls them filthy rags. So all the good things you could possibly do as a being a what you consider to be a good person, the Bible says are filthy rags. And your grandfather cannot be your God and he cannot be your Savior, no matter how good of a preacher he might have been. Whatever you spoke out uh, that is that is going to take you to heaven, whatever you spoke out that you know your sins are forgiven, if, if it wasn't Jesus Christ and him alone, then you have another God in your life. It might be your own works. It might be your church. You might have said, well, I'm, I've been baptized in my church. Well, then your church literally has become your God and your Savior. Only Jesus can save you. Only Jesus can cleanse you. Only Jesus can, can bring that atonement to you. And the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. So grace alone doesn't save you. It's through your faith in that grace. The grace is unearned. You didn't earn it. It's unmerited. You didn't, you didn't deserve it. And the Bible tells us it's the favor of God that was given to us in Jesus Christ, the Son, the only begotten Son, of the one and true and living God. And Jesus is the only way. And my hand is offered to you if you don't know him. If you've been putting your confidence and your God has been your church and your God has been your own actions and your God has been anything but Jesus Christ, then you don't know him. Because it can only be Christ. It can't be Christ and all these other things. It's only Jesus. And so he offers to you today a cleansing a full and complete cleansing. You probably heard that old hymn. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. That makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. Harden not your heart. Put your full confidence and your full trust and all of your faith and all of your hope in Jesus. You say, well, how do I do that? The Bible says recognize you're a sinner. Maybe you've already done that. The Bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible also says for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That means we owe a debt for our own sin. We owe it, not someone else. The Bible says, but God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That means that Jesus came to die for sinners. And then the Bible says this, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It also says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
So the first thing you need to know is that you're a sinner. The second thing you need to know is that you owe the debt for your sin. The third thing you need to know is that Jesus paid the debt for your sin. And the fourth thing is just believe. Receive. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So ask him whether you can speak or not. Maybe you can only hear. Maybe you cannot speak. This is a heart matter, the Bible says. The moment you believe, you can receive Jesus, whether you can say it or not. So in your heart, say, dear Jesus, or maybe out loud at your home or wherever you're at right now, say, dear Jesus, dear Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you are the only way. That you said you were the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh to the Father God, but by you, I believe. And then you receive him by just asking him, be mine. Be my Savior. I make you my Savior. Come into my heart today. Forgive me of all my sins. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Amen. Do you believe that? It is not the prayer that I gave to you. It is your belief and your faith in the only begotten Son of God. Well, God bless you all. I hope you've enjoyed today's teaching about seeing with our spiritual eyes. And if you've just come to know the Lord, share that with us. That would be a blessing, a blessing for us to know. And, uh, and then you now have some spiritual eyes in which you can see things in a different way. So study the word of God and ask the Lord in his spirit because his spirit is now with you and ask him for promises that will help you to have hope as you wait for your answers. God bless you all. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Don't forget to hit subscribe or like or share so that others can hear these teachings as well. And you will also, when you subscribe, get to get our new teachings as they drop in. God bless y'all.